Hi YouTube! So I'm going to talk about this book right here, Jude Devereux, her new Lavender Morning book. I apologize if I look a little... <laughs> um, I woke up and I am going to the library to pick up a new book. And I'm going to drop this one off because I finished it and I just haven't... I woke up and I haven't had time to do anything, so I look a little... Which I understand. Okay, so... I know my last video I was talking about Jude and how great she is as an author well this book did not live up to my expectations I hate to say it, I hate to kick myself in the butt but this is the first book by Miss Devereux that I didn't really like um there was one scene in it I mean where they're making cupcakes I liked that. Um, in this book, there was no Montgomery, no Taggart. Um, there were Harcourts. Um, oh, as usual, though, her book did sort of evolve around this house, which was nice. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, the summer house, everyone gathered at the house. Um, in that book. In this book, the gathering place is this house, which you'll read about if you read the book. Um, I mean, I, I, I would say if you're a fan of her, I would read it, but it's not going to do it for you like some of her other books. It's also part of a series, so it does end well enough, but it does leave room for her to continue. You can tell it leaves room for that. I'm just trying to think. I feel like maybe... There were too many characters interconnected in this book, and it's not that they were interconnected and there was too many, it was more like too many vague characters were interconnected so far. Like there's this guy named Alex, and you're like, well who the heck is this guy? Connected to a whole bunch of Davids, connected to her, connected to... There were a lot of people who were deceased that this book talked about, and you're like, having a hard time in your mind connecting who is who and how they're related and why they're important. So that's something that um, was a little frustrating in this book. Um, other than that, it was well written. Um, her style, of course, is, is nice. Um, I guess that's mostly it. I think I had a, I didn't connect very well to the main character, Jocelyn, in this book. Um, I think part of that is because her childhood was sort of scattered but still I felt like I should have connected to who she was a little bit better and I didn't um, let's just see <clears throat> Jocelyn Minton I didn't even know that was her last name I mean I read I, did, I never read the flap before I read the books. So I don't try to, but I didn't even know that was her last name. Through the whole book, like, didn't really mention that. Anyways, she's a woman torn between two worlds. Her mother grew up attending private schools and afternoon teas, but she married a local handyman. After her mother died, when Joss was only five years old, her father remarried into his own class, and Joss became an outsider until she met Edeline Harcourt. Now. That's also annoying for me. It's E D I L E A N. And to me, it's Edelian. But I have a. Again, that name, it just. I don't know. It may just be me. I just. It doesn't work for me. Although she was 60 years Joss's senior, Miss Edie, or Eddie, was a kindred soul who understood her like no one else ever had. When she passes away, she leaves her, uh, Joss, all her worldly possessions, including an 18th century house, and a letter with clues to a mystery that began in 1941. I really didn't feel like the letter had clues. If you read the letter, it just said a couple things. Um, I, mean, I don't want to give it away, but it didn't really give, it didn't give clues, really. I, I, I disagree with that. She also mentioned she's found the perfect man for Joss handsome young lawyer. Yeah, that's one thing she mentions in the letter. 
Uh, she's shocked to learn that the mystery, the house, and the future love of her life are all in Edelian, the small town in Virginia that Miss Edie never told her about. Heard that the woman who meant so much to her kept so many secrets, Jocelyn moves to this tight-knit village in an attempt to understand the legacy that has been left to her. As she begins to dig into Miss Edie's mystery, she soon discovers some shocking surprises about her family's history and her own future, and she meets a man with his own mysterious past. I think that this this book cover doesn't really do justice to what the book is about. Um, she meets the man with a mystery, da da da. I mean, yeah, there's some things about him that he doesn't share, but it just makes it sound like, ooh, she runs into this guy eventually. No, she runs into this guy right away. He's no big whoop at first. Uh, and then it says. She soon discovers some shocking surprises. No, she doesn't. She knows that the Miss Edie character lied to her a lot, and she discovers that soon. But she doesn't discover really the big, whoa, thing until, like, the last chapter of the book. Anyways, I, I just felt, again, like this was not her best work. This was not one that I would say really grabbed you and made you say, oh my god, this is one of my favorite books by her, I love it, anything like that. So if you're um, looking to read it, don't be disappointed. Maybe if I talk about it the way I am, you're going to be like expecting something not so great, and maybe you'll like it more because I'm kind of downplaying it.